Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. As I say, every single episode, everyone is a special guest to me because one, they take their time to meet with me or talk to me on the podcast. And two, they have so much wonderful knowledge to share. I am joined today by a special, special guest, a motivational person, really going to get you uh, revved up and and motivated to take life, Mr. Anthony uh, Rodman like Rhode Island. I had to make sure I got that correct because, you know, I murder names. But, uh, you know, it's your boy, Ill Phil, a.k.a. Positive Filter, a.k.a. I got Austin, Texas in my leg, a.k.a. I got two kids. I'm always tired, a.k.a. I do text (laughs) back. And so I'm joined by Mr. Anthony here. So, Anthony, go ahead and introduce yourself to the listeners. Yes, I'm Anthony Rodman. I don't have any a.k.a.s. Make him up. (laughs) <laughs> aka god's chosen one. Oh, so we, <laughs> oh see you know, talking about you didn't have one and you just hit me with a flame like jeez <laughs> like, i don't have one but i'm gonna hit you with this bar real quick oh man I'm gonna, that's that's gonna be your name now the, the uh god's chosen one i love that and so Anthony, yeah. going into uh you know obviously sometimes on this podcast i'm meeting people for the first time we're gonna be friends after this i know that i could just tell off your your vibe. I did a little bit of your watch your videos about climbing mountains, chasing dreams, and man, it got me fired up. But give a, give a listeners a little bit about what you do and and just a spiel about your services in general. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of a company called Success Epitomize. It's a company that deals with um, mental health issues and turn into mental empowerment. We have we help with mental peak performance, and we help train people to be successful in their personal and professional lives so the whole point of it is taking the power of your mind to learn how to create success beyond the barriers that you can only do physically so that's what we really focus on our job is to help you learn when you're at the rope of i've ever done everything i can do physically we teach you how to go to that next level of success so that's what we really focus on so we are a company that literally helps you train yourself to become the best possible you where there's no limits no barriers and no boundaries now i like that so when i hear the word mental health issues um some of the things i think about with issues are the actual real diagnosed uh mental health problems such as anxiety depression all those things um in your services and you're saying you're channeling you're channeling that power of your mind is some of your services lent toward helping with those mental health uh, disorders and trying to frame it into a positive aspect? Well, we take it past a positive aspect. We actually heal the situation. We diagnose mm-hmm. the situation, and actually heal it. So we have a five phase system mm-hmm. and we start with the spirit. We go to the soul. Then we go to the conscious mind, the emotions, and then we deal with the physical body. So we go through a five-phase process. Now, the problem with mental health issues is people try to go straight to the issue. Mm -hmm. But the problem where our mind works is you have to know where you're going before you can go back and fix things. Because you can get so deep caught up in the issues that you've experienced from your past that you can feel like there's no way out. So we make sure they have a clear-cut direction of their future, a set goal, a set vision, so they know where they're going to climb themselves out when we start digging into deep-rooted issues. They heal them, fix them, and use those and help rewrite those. So that's the way we go through the process. Now, I know a lot of people, um, usually when I I heard this quote, that if you fixate on your mistakes in the past, that's kind of like depression. If you over-fixate or worry about the future, that's anxiety. But if you focus on your mindset in the present, you know, is some of that, techniques about i know you just said 
looking into the future, but some of this stuff with the mental empowerment, are you trying to really focus on mindfulness and present in the moment? Well, there's a, there's a time to be present, mm -hmm. but if you are present without a future end, mm -hmm. then you will make a lot of mistakes because you will learn, like most people say, experience is the best teacher. That's not true. Wisdom is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. So I need to know where I'm going so I can find wisdom to know how to get there so I can use the mistakes of others to my benefit and my advantage. The problem people have is people don't understand the different minds we have which confuses them on the process. Most people, when I say your mind, they think of you have one mind. Mm -hmm. But we inherently know we have more minds because if I ask you certain questions, have you heard of a subconscious mind? Let's go, no, go ahead, explain it to the listeners, the, the different minds. Yeah, so you have different minds. We have a unconscious mind, mm -hmm. which is the mind that's connected to your spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the most powerful mind you have. It's the mind that allows you to dream, and see all possibilities. Mm -hmm. That's oh, yeah, the yes. mind you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Yeah, You're I've heard deep of deep realm sleep. Mm -hmm. I heard about this, but it, it explain it for the listeners. Yeah, I definitely heard. Now, now that you say it like that, I've heard the the REM yes. sleep and that that dream mind. Yes, yes, I've heard of that. Yes. Now we can get into that state consciously when you learn how, and I'll explain that later. But that's the most powerful mind you have. But it works on autopilot. It is unconscious. Mm -hmm. Now the next lower mind behind that is the subconscious mind. Now your unconscious mind, the reason why it's so powerful because it holds your true nature, your true God-like nature, the creative part of you. It holds your gifts, it holds your legacy, it holds your virtues, it literally holds your values and the true essence of your character. That unconscious mind holds that. So you have to, most people have suppressed that so long and they don't know how to tap into their unconscious mind. A lot of people don't even believe it's there. Mm. That most people are functioning off the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is connected to your soul. The subconscious mind is what holds your talents, your personalities, it holds your habits, it also holds your memories. And most people's mental health issues come from deep rooted uh, memories mm. from being given a false image that they became their nature. Most people don't understand who they are. They were before the world told them who they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're true. And self. that's the problem. Yeah, Most true people self. are, yes, they have become what someone has told them they are over years and years of impression and it's created a personality, it's created a memory, it's created habits in their subconscious mind. Yeah. You become what you think you are. So like if someone Exactly. If, and so if a whole society says you're an angry black man, I'm just saying for instance, you're an angry black man with 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 low intellect that are not going to be achieving stuff you just start taking on those qualities if you hear those messages but if you start exactly saying the messages of yourself like i'm successful i'm achieving i'm smart all these things uh you break through those but like you're right you see what you become i mean you become what you are told exactly over and over again those negative messages you speak to yourself exactly so i believe and in your that. subconscious mind literally creates programs yeah it takes yeah. it creates programs so whatever you feed it yeah if you do it long enough it mm -hmm. will literally say, oh, that's what we're doing. I'll create a program for that. Yep. And it literally will go on autopilot. Oh, yeah, now, I, get that. I get that. The only mm -hmm. way I can change that is like a computer. I have to override it with another program or a higher program. And that's mm -hmm. the healing process. Yes. That takes time because you ha don't know how deep rooted that program is. Mm -hmm. It depends on the person. Now you have a conscious mind, which is what most people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. because it deals with our conscious awareness right now the problem with the conscious mind is the conscious mind has four different layers that connects you to the, all your other minds mm. this is what makes the conscious mind so unique now the conscious mind has within it what we call consciousness this is our analytical or logical mind that mind holds all our blueprints formulas, strategies, patterns, anything that we can figure out analytically or logically. Mm -hmm. That's connected to your spiritual mind, the unconscious mind. So whatever you see in the spirit or the unconscious realm, mm -hmm. for you to manifest in your life, you have to learn how to find a logical, tangible way for it to come to pass. That's mm -hmm. why most people don't believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. Then inside your conscious mind, you have what we all familiar with is called imagination. Mm -hmm. Your imagination holds 
what you can inwardly see as possible. So your imagination holds your inward vision, just mm -hmm. like your eyes hold your sight, your imagination holds your vision. Mm -hmm. This is why your eyes are the gateway to the soul because it goes straight to that subconscious state. Now, mm -hmm. what's so sweet about it is your subconscious doesn't know the difference between your vision, which is your imagination, and your outward eyes. Yeah. So if you imagine something long enough, it will create a program yeah, as if you're seeing it yeah. in the outward expression. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. know the difference. Yeah, I got you. Like if you see, that's why you said if you see where you're going, you're going to do it. Like if you like close your eyes and envision like someday I'm going to be a public speaker and you start really picturing it in your mind, then then your body's going to start saying, okay, what do I need to do? I need to work on public speaking or you start getting, yeah. you know, you start kind of, like you said, you start programming yourself to start acting yeah. as the thing that you see. Like you look up to someone on, you know, uh, on TV and, and they, you ask them a question like, oh, did you see this championship before? And they'd be like, yeah, I pictured this. I, I, exactly. I, I wanted to do this for a long time, you know, like, exactly. I, I dreamed exactly. of this. Yeah. So exactly. And but then your body is mine. Yeah. But then your right. body goes into the actions of what it needs to do. Like to be a successful football player, to be a Super Bowl champion, you like your body starts to go into autopilot. Like, okay, I need to get strong. I need to lift weights. I need to know how to run, you know, like your body goes. Exactly. That, that yeah. Yes. Because your subconscious mind holds your talent level. Mm -hmm. your personalities and your habits. So your subconscious mind starts creating a talent level that you can function at, mm -hmm. personalities you need to start acting and habits you need to start creating mm -hmm. to achieve the vision you constantly keep pouring in your imagination mm -hmm. because your imagination is connected to your soul and subconscious mind. Yeah. Now the next thing we have inside our conscious mind is a what we call conscience. Okay. Your conscious decides what side of the spectrum you're going to function at. Italy, whole, Italy decides what's good and evil, what's a blessing, what's a curse, what's light, what's darkness, what's right, what's righteous, what's wicked, what's pure, what's perverse. It holds what's prosperous, what's um, poverty. It holds success or failure and life or death. It decides what side of the spectrum that you're going to use. So it's very important. And then it holds it all together. And when all the information is presented, it sends it to your free will. Now your free will has two parts. It has what we call an ego. Mm -hmm. so and it has your free will. It's like Sigmund Freud like, stuff, you know? <laughs> yes, so your yeah. ego is what most people are super confused by. Mm -hmm. Your ego is all yourselves. It's your self-image, self-worth, mm -hmm self-respect, mm -hmm. self-confidence, all your selves are in your ego. Now, most people feel like you're supposed to have a weak ego. The reason why most people have mental health issues is because they have a weak ego. You actually need a strong ego. Most people with a weak ego have what we call false self-confidence. That's why they come off the way they do. Insecurities, per se. Per se. Insecurity, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Your ego holds all your choices. Once you take the information, your ego makes a choice by your self-image, your self-respect, your self-worth. Mm -hmm. But self -worth. to get things accomplished, you have to go through your free will. Your free will makes that final decision. Yeah. I give you the example of how this works. Most people made a New Year's resolution a few years, a few days ago. Yeah. Their ego helped them make a choice. They have an image that they want to become, so they made mm -hmm. a choice. I'm going yeah. to work out six o'clock every morning this year, and I'm going to get right. in the right. best shape of my life. That's yeah. your ego. Yeah. But when six o'clock comes or the next day, that's the free will to make the choice to do it. it to live has in to it. make the choice to do it. To live. There in you it. go. Yeah. There you so, go. So you dropped in mad dimes. How did you come? How did you come into these? To this, this study, this this philosophy, this thought of thought of self. Like, what was your individual journey to get to you thinking about this stuff like this? Well, it's been very unique. Is because I cannot take credit for the information because it's been imparted and impressed into me. Okay. So what what I mean is been divine intervention because what I did was I wanted to find out there has to be more than what the eye can see. Okay. So I was given, I was seeking in college. Okay, there you go. And I was given a dream in the middle of the night around three o'clock. And I woke up and I wrote down 
if, if everybody's ever experienced it before, it was like ghost writing. Something was okay. writing through me, and I wrote down a vision of pretty much the rest of my life. Okay, wow. Okay, not just not just finishing school, but the whole life. What, yes. what year? What's, what year was it? Sophomore year, junior year, senior this year. This is maybe my junior senior year. So, like, I mean, you still had a little bit left for the semester, but you're like, yo, let me finish. Your mind already went past graduation, way past. Yeah, it. I have. I I think I make people laugh because I tell them I literally have a hundred year plan. I know exactly what I'm gonna do for the next hundred years. Oh, so you you cutting yourself off at a hundred, huh? <laughs> Well, it's not cutting it off. <laughs> you know, so I should be finished with my assignment, though. <laughs> so, hey, so when you, so when you hit 100, you're like, yo, I'm done. I, I'm peaced out, y'all, and just leave. Like, bounce yeah, y'all yeah, 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 yeah. should be able to take it from here. Got gotcha. you. So, so you wrote it out. Okay, so um, I'm a big, firm believer of part to whole. So you went all the way with your vision, all the way out for a long time. How did you mm -hmm. bring it back? How did you bring that back to, okay, let me just bring it down to the the minute day-to-day -day thing of my, my day at graduation. How'd you bring that 100-year plan to what can I do tomorrow, the very next now, day? Now, that's the journey that I, that's the journey how I start. So now, as you get that 100-year plan, I start seeking on how do I get there, and I start mm -hmm. getting impressions. Now, mm -hmm. what I learned this time period is, is a powerful thing is why I got the information at the time I did. I learned that on this journey is an opportunity that everyone gets to experience where they can tap into the divine consciously mm -hmm. during that three to six time in the morning. Now, most people get dream, they get the awareness of their dreams and visions during that time. But if mm -hmm. you're up consciously, you'll be able to get the information without it being coded mm -hmm. or in like a puzzle form. Right. So I'll be able to, to actually get the information step by step. And as I started doing that, I started writing the information down mm. to get an actual systematic, mm -hmm. this is what I need to do, mm -hmm. where I need to go, this is where I need to be. And as I started writing it down to get the information, I create a system with the information and that's where I'm trying to give the information back in a system which Success Epitomized was birthed with that system and so, place to be able to help people learn how this so works. With this, with this big goal, this big overarching goal that you had uh, for a hundred yeah. years, uh, let, you know, when people might think you're silly, who was one of the first people you shared this with, and what was their thoughts? Did they like get on board? They call you crazy? Did they make fun of you? Like, how how did you well, feel? Like, yeah. like, you know, like this this is this is a grandiose thing. And I told you, I'm like on board. I need to probably write. I only got out to five years. What I want to do with myself, I ain't got it's about a hundred. I definitely be in the. Fir I'm a firm believer of like saying, what do I want to do in the next five years? Or 10 years and then uh, similar to you like what can I do to get there and, and what usually most of the times too I'm like who's the person that's already doing that the things I want to do five years ago how can I tap into yes. them and ask them questions and get their guidance and that's why I'm a firm believer in mentorship and all that but yes let's bring it back down when you had this hundred year plan did you keep it to yourself or did you share it with someone well I shared it the first one I shared it with this is a beautiful part is I shared it with my mom mm-hmm I share it with my mom. Now, the beautiful thing about me is I grew up, I was blessed to grow up super wealthy. Now, what oh. I mean by that is we didn't have physical wealth, but my parents had wealthy, gave us wealthy images, wealthy really? ideas. We had yes. wealthy mindsets. I get that. So there was ne That's the most wealth a parent can give any child is I had, my parents never gave us limitations. So my mom, I gave her the information and she, she already knew, oh yeah, I've been praying that over you your whole life, I already know. That's how, how mindset she had. Now mm -hmm. my mom, I give you a little background on my mom. My dad's the same way. My mom is a, a lady that has three doctorates and she got a, a doctor in a time period where women wow. of color was not supposed to have doctorate. Wow, that's so amazing. she already had that kind of mindset. That's amazing, yes. My dad was an entrepreneur, and he was able to take care of us in a time where that wasn't as familiar or norm today, yeah. if that makes any sense. So when it I gave her information, sense. her biggest thing was seek more what you need to specifically do, and whatever I need to do to help you, let me know. Gotcha. So she was very encouraging. She was on board. So 
Now, when I start telling other people, that's when they say, "Man, what yeah. are you talking about?" That's only yeah, okay. Let's let's go with the okay. So we got the supporter parent. Let's go with the uh, the challengers, the naysayers. What were some of their things, and what were some of the things they were saying to you? And you had to push well, through them, that, and then push through that, and say, you know what? I mean, this is it, though. I I gotta yes. keep going. So most people say that it was too big for someone to accomplish. Maybe it was something that you're going to show people or generations to come to accomplish. I didn't believe that because if that was the case, it would have been given to me. It would have been specifically so. So most people would not have helped. They would not help until because they said it was too big of a goal. So I just started by myself. Mm -hmm. And when results started to come, then people got on board. Yep, that's now the happens. blessing part for me was I started getting all kind of success right away mm. because it was divine intervention helping. So it, I couldn't take credit for it, but I was blessed to have parents that allowed me to go through the process where I was able to come home, have a place to stay, while I was able to build things up and then be able to move forward. Gotcha. That makes so sense. So that's why it was very uh, powerful opportunity because the mindset was, it's possible. What are you willing to do to make that possible? So that's what gotcha. makes it, it, it helped in that journey because you know your closest circle can destroy yeah. the power yeah. that's within you, which is why we teach people how to pick and select your inner circle of like-minded people because that can literally break or enhance the thoughts and the visions that you have. That's true. So I had another question. I was like, do you believe that uh, in regards to this stuff, you know, we see a lot of uh, people um, talking about uh, mental health and all that stuff. And there's a big stigma for black males. And um, yeah. do you believe that's been an obstacle within your, your, your field? And or do you feel like the stigma for black men is getting better? Um, out there. I mean, when I say stigma, like the, sti the stigma about mental health and all those things, because l let me rephrase. When I started studying well-being and positivity, um, I mm -hmm. saw very, and positivity, positive mindset, mindset, mindfulness, all these like things about empowerment. Uh, most time, I'm not going to front, most time when I look at even scholarly journals and who's studying happiness, it's mostly white men and white females. There's a, there's yes. not, there's not a large study. Like for instance, like one of the things I look at as a resource is the greater good Science Center in, in uh, California, UC Berkeley. I mean, it's a great resource, but uh, as I, or, or positive psychology, that whole field, that industry, uh, there's, that's a great study too. You know, like, you know, like study, the study of all this stuff, vision, mindset, best self, all that stuff. But I feel like yes. there is a, there is a absence of men of color in that, that study. Do you believe in, 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 in your, uh, you know, industry of going out there and talking about these visionary goals and empowerment, do you feel like there is a, a disproportionate number of black men in this, in this field? Um, definitely. And the reason why is because most of us have been trained and taught that when you're dealing with these issues, you're crazy, <clears throat> you're weak, and you're not supposed to show that you're hurting. Mm -hmm. So most of the people and our communities that we grew up with, they hide these issues and mm -hmm. alcoholism mm -hmm. and drugs and smoking or and womanizing to try to override the issues and hurts that they're yeah. actually having. Right. Now, because I'm a former athlete, I've been able to dive into these issues with people from our communities Mm -hmm. because I'm able to use what they are, their, their desires to help them deal with the issues because now you know athletes, they're trying to get the mental edge. So now we can mm -hmm. deal with these issues through athletes. We deal with mm -hmm. entertainers. Mm -hmm. We deal with business people. They're not realizing that these are mental health issues until they get into it. Mm -hmm. Because most people have hitting these issues so long and they put a door, a key, and they threw it so far in their subconscious that they didn't even realize it was still there. Yeah. They plan on it never coming out again. But it's affecting the cycle of their life over and over and over again. It's hitting a wall and they're not understanding why am I not able to reach this next level of success? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's you like, have to yeah. get to it. So if you deal with just staying in the present, like we talked about earlier, you're going to hit a wall 
because you're only going to do what you've always done, no matter how hard you work. No matter how much you try to prepare, you're going to hit a wall because your subconscious has created a program. This is the level you can reach. Yeah, you, you capture yourself. Yes. So and also, and also you, you, you capture yourself. You capture yourself, and you sometimes some of that cap is uh, forced on you by you know uh, personal trauma. Some of that cap yes. is pers- forced on you by systemic limitations yes. like you say like the system that you're in believes that like oh no that's impossible only certain certain people can be billionaires or whatever i don't know exactly because you, you all don't these even caps. know another system exists yeah that's pretty interesting yes that's the problem people don't even know others first of all the first issue people have is identity crisis mm. and low images of themselves they don't mm-hmm. understand who they truly are so if i have been told this is who i am Say I like grow up. People say, "Well, I'm a basketball player. I'm a rapper. Mm-hmm. I'm a even if I'm, I'm a doctor, or whatever." You just put your image in something that can be taken away. So, say you lose your job. Say you don't get the career you want. Your whole identity and image has just been removed. The true nature of you are just been removed mm-hmm. because you placed it in something tangible, which is the worst possible way you can teach someone that's their image. So do you, do you believe in, instead of saying I am and attaching yourself to titles, you attach yourself to other like actual adjectives? Like for me, you know, that, that I do lurk on that too, because I like, I'm not my job. I know I'm not, that's not my thing, but I'm like, yeah. I attach myself. Like I'm a person that's kind. I'm a person that helps other people. I do all that. And then I find a way to do that in my job. But at the core of me is someone that wants to help other people or be nice and be kind. And so, like you said, if that, if any job was ripped away from me, they can't take away that I'm a kind person. Yes. Well, and that's still the one, the, one of the minds that we have not addressed, which is, that's the emotional mind, okay. which is what we call the creative mind. That holds your emotion. So no one can take that away from you. But then you also have a, your physical body also has a mind, which we call the ethical mind, which holds your ethics, your efforts, your mm-hmm. output. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with it is people don't understand that no matter what language you have, I am is the most powerful two words in any language. Because whatever Mm -hmm. you put after it, you will be and will become. So it literally goes to the creative part of you. It goes to the actual nature of you, which is your spirit and your actual unconscious mind. So the reason why what I teach people to do is You have to actually, for you to understand who you are, you have to understand who created you. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So a car cannot tell me what it is. The manufacturer has to tell me who it is. So too many people are trying to go to Mm -hmm. the manufacturer or another car and tell them this is who they are. But you have to go to the one that created it. So the creator said that you are the creator of your reality. So I have to know that I'm the one that create my reality. Okay. Even though your reality is not true or not, you created it. You are the master of your destiny. You decide mm-hmm. what your destiny is. Uh, I love that. You know, you know, you I, I, I got a special poem that goes along with that master of my destiny, but I, I know, I, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you, you are know, the like, source of your world. Yes. Meaning is yeah. you decide how much is going to come into your world. You're the visionary of your possibilities. Whatever you can see is what's possible for you. You're the ruler of your decisions. Yeah, yeah. You're the advocate of your choices. You're the leader of your desires. Most people are led by their desires. They don't understand. They lead their desires. Yeah, and you're yeah. the dominator of your environment. Yeah. You decide what's in your environment. So I try to tell people who they actually are so they can know what their image should be. Those things right there, there's nothing tangible that can change that image of them, who they actually are. I love Once this. they know that, then they're able to understand that if I am these things, that means I can decide what I become or what will manifest in my life. No tangible thing can stop that. Yeah. So how about for the listeners out there, let's say someone is listening to this podcast, they're getting super motivated. Uh, Let's try and exercise with them. What is one thing they could do right now? uh, You know, whether in their car or just kind of quick exercise that we can do to help them start thinking about this future self. Oh, great. So the first thing they should, they need to do is 
literally rewind and listen to the things I just said they were and affirm those every day. Okay. After they affirm those, they need to have a vision of where they want to go. Now, if they don't know the vision, they need to ask for a vision and believe it's going to come. And then they will get one that at night when they go to bed and they need to write it down when they wake up. Mm -hmm. They need to write that vision down. They need to make it as plain as possible and then add what they want with that vision. So mm -hmm. now you're co-creating with the divine. So now you have the vision that was given for you. Now you write the vision of what you want and you allow those to bridge together. Okay. Now, when you write a vision down, it traps it in time. So it will happen. Okay. It might take some time. You might go through a process, but if you write it down, it traps it in time. It actually has to happen if you don't grow weary and give up. So if they have a dream, they wake up from their dream, they write it down. What was write it down. Do you are you a firm believer that if it's like a big, big goal, say what like break it down and what they can do today to get to that place? Or what would you do with that that part? Just write the big go down first, because okay. before you get to step by step process, you have to know where you're going. The creator part of you starts with the end before it begins anything. OK, so you have to know the end and then reverse engineer the steps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of how to get there. But if I just start focusing on what I got to do today, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you're going to deal with a lot of barriers for no reason because you didn't know the direction where you're going. It's kind of like a GPS. Mm -hmm. The GPS doesn't start giving you directions without knowing the destination. So okay. now I can show you which routes you can take, which the best way to get there. I love that. Um, I'm trying to think of, I'm thinking of some questions because I'm like thinking about my mind. I'm like closing my eyes, trying to picture some big goals. Um, has there, even in this vision of yours for a hundred years, has there been something that even you were like, whoa, that ain't going to happen. You know, Matt, like you started doubting yourself, even in your hundred year goal plan. Well, it's funny that you said that because when I first heard it, it was so big, I didn't know what it was. And for like the next six months, I started like hearing things on TV, hearing things on radio saying it. And at this time in my life, I wasn't listening to this stuff. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like I was seeking out this type of information or this type of positive and type mm -hmm. of thinking. I would hear, if you have something, if you've been given a dream or vision so big, that you can, you know, you can never accomplish is because you can't accomplish it without God. It will always have something so big and so vast that I kept like, what is this? And why am mm -hmm. I keep hearing this? Mm -hmm. So when I asked my mom, she was like, yes, when you're giving something from the divine, it's going to be something that you're not going to be able to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. This is why the first step I ask people to do is learn how, what the divine has sent you so you can co-create with it. Because there's going to be certain parts that you cannot physically do, but if you get aligned with what's being set up for you, mm -hmm. then all creation will move out of its way to allow the opportunities, the relationships, the Doesn't. manifestations to happen for you. Yeah. Because I have some, big, um, I, I mean, and I don't have a hundred year goal. I have like, you know what I'm saying, my big goals, but I, even with my big goals, when I look up on paper, I, I can't do these solo. I can't do a lot of these things by myself. I need to yes. uh, align myself with good people and find resources, as I said earlier, uh, seek the help of mentors and people that have already been through that journey to ask their advice. And so I do yes. have a lot of dreams, but I can't do it alone. Yes. And that's where it will be drawn to you when you start functioning and what you need to do, the right people will come. Now, this is what's beautiful about not having a mentor is you do have a mentor anytime. The beautiful, most beautiful mentors we have are experience of past. There's mm -hmm. nothing new that's never happened under the sun. Mm -hmm. So you can literally get experience by looking at history because the same thing's going to repeat itself. Yeah. Most people think time is linear. Yeah, it's not, so time like is yeah. actually circular. It's actually cycles. So it's going to happen over and over and over again. Yeah. So you can always look in the past. You can always look at people's failures yeah. from what that's doing what you're trying to do. And you can always ask for wisdom. Most yes. people don't understand. Yeah. You can literally ask for wisdom. It can be imparted into you. Yeah. Most people don't receive it because they don't ask. They receive I'm, not because they ask not. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer in that too. Like you said, like the resource, I'm a history major. And yes. if you just read books and read about autobiographies of people that are legends, 
if you really, really read their autobiographies, we only see the tip of the iceberg where they're successful, but really read their early chapters when they were just like everyone else. And yes. just see like, oh, you know, like Jay-Z, you know, I'm just throwing him out there, but like yes. you know, selling mixtapes out your trunk, you know, like someone, someone always had to start somewhere. We only, yes. we, we only see the achievable of these people that are immensely successful because we see them at the end of their success, well, not end of their success, but at the peak of it. But like, yes, you know, all these autobiographies are so helpful. Michael Jordan got cut and from his bas- his JV basketball yes. team, all this stuff. So I love reading books. They become your mentors, and they yes. become your mentors. Yes, yes. Oh man, this Second-hand is great. Secondhand mentors. This is great, secondhand. And so h- how about this? Who are some of your secondhand mentors when you were starting this early journey, and who became your actual physical ones besides your mom? So, Secondhand Mentors, the first book that changed my life mm-hmm. was a guy that passed away not too long ago, Transition, which was a guy named Miles Monroe. Okay. I read his book and it changed my life forever. It was called Rediscovering the Kingdom. That changed my life because it allowed me to see life through a different lens. Mm-hmm. It allowed me to see um, where most people <clears throat> say, this is how life is supposed to be. It showed me that life was totally different from that aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I actually learned how to get mentorship through impartation and um, learning how to meditate in a way where mm-hmm. I got mentorship through divine impartation. So I kind of didn't branch off too far to get out of multiple mentors because the issue is when I did start branching out and start getting mentors, a lot of them couldn't see that what I was talking about was possible. So I kind of stopped pretty quickly, start seeking for mentorship because the way I was thinking was too vast for people to even concept that that's being possible. So I start seeking for it because I start realizing most people are not going to see your vision until you become the vision for them to be able to see. Yeah. You got to start something like you said, I'm going to be a crazy big speaker. And they're like, okay, yeah, right. They see you do a couple speech. They see you do a couple speeches. Now they're like, okay, I can see you can do it. Exactly. And then you'll start having people that can start Mm -hmm. collaborating with you or Mm -hmm. helping you. They'll start coming as you start moving forward. Yeah. People will start coming to help you build this process and this journey with you you'll be surprised how many people start believing when they see you actually doing what you're saying but this is why you're not supposed to give to me people your vision when you start because you're still trying to believe it yourself you gotta protect it protect your vision you have to protect it because it can get destroyed and part of the process is it getting stripped away Mm. it being that persecution that you have that opposition that you have people Mm. telling you it can't is actually part of the process but if you start that process too early, yeah. people you can, can shut you down lose early. it. Yeah, I mean, like I yes, say, Michael, shut you down early. Like Michael Jordan, they say he got cut from the basketball team, and they say he's like done. I'm done with basketball. And he never played again. Yes, that could be that could <laughs> be part of the process because part of it's supposed to groom you. It's supposed to groom you to become. Yeah, it's part of the process of grooming you to become. But if you don't understand that, you will. You can literally say, "Well, maybe they're right." Yeah, and then you're done. Oh and man! Done. So I heard uh, you you focus inward and call for wisdom. So do you do like real like not real, but do you actually practice meditation and mindfulness and sitting with yourself and to to hear things or just click clarity? How do you do you do those things or how? What's, what's yes, I do. I do that for sure. I do that for sure. So meditation. Most people only hear it of mindfulness. Now the yeah. problem with mindfulness is mindfulness does what we talked about it allows your mind to wander to a place where you start realizing where the deep issues came from now most people when they start finding out these thoughts or where they came from because they've been taught mindfulness they don't know what to do about it so we have 12 techniques of meditation that we teach to help people know what to do with the information they see so now the problem is the most powerful part of meditation is meditating on the laws of life. Most people don't understand your meditation, your meditative state 
is going to deal with your conscience part of your mind so if you don't know the laws of life and how life works you'll continue to stay in mindfulness and you'll get to a state where you'll be aware of what's going on but won't know what to do about it does that make sense i guess so i mean it's kind of like you know it's like you have to like i mean different people like before you go into meditation you kind of need to to like be prepared to what's the purpose of it and and also yes, like you know, need to know the purpose and there's something yeah. you need to meditate on so a lot of okay. people confuse meditation with visualization yeah. or with affirmation with prayer a lot of people have mixed all these different things and call it meditation but meditation is actually in simple terms when you contemplate and think on something so long that you actually start dissecting it and dwelling upon it where you start getting to the deep root of the thought. So I give you an example. Have you ever thought about something so much that someone was around you like, hey, bro, where'd you just go right there? You wasn't here right now. Oh, like you just like, zoned out, you weren't listening. You, you zoned out, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the medit that's the meditative state that you have to get in. So what you zoned out on, you was thinking about something so deeply, you were no longer focusing on your present state. You were focused on the actual thought that you were thinking on. And when that thought, you can think on it, when you can dissect it enough, it can become life for you. You can actually learn how to take that thought and make that thought a actual reality. That's what the power of the meditation. But if you don't understand the laws that make that thought come into manifestation, mm -hmm that thought will stay as just a thought. This is why we teach the laws of life, because if you don't understand the laws of life, that thought will always stay in that mental space and never come into demonstration or manifestation, which is the whole purpose of the meditation is to take those thoughts mm. and bring them into life. Got it. Mm. So we're coming up on a different part of the show. Uh, we call it, uh, this shot for shot i get to ask you any random question you get to ask me any random question could be related to this topic could be just totally th thrown off uh do okay. you want to go first or i go first you can go first so i can get the concept all right so you said you play basketball right what position yes. did you play how far did you get in your basketball career and if it wasn't the uh, nba if you were to play in the nba what team would you want to play for okay that's great so i play point guard in a time where I was a shooting point guard in a time period that wasn't very popular. <laughs> yeah. I made it all the way up to Division One basketball. Right before I was going to declare for the NBA, I broke my ankle, so I didn't make it um, to the professional ranks. I, um, If I play in the NBA, I would like to play for the team where I could play the most. <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> so what kind of style you said shooting guard what kind of who, who who in the nba or yeah or in college basketball do you say your game was very similar to my game was very similar to um not saying i was as good as him but very similar to a guy named like baron davis Oh yeah, yeah. Come on now. And, and Steph on Mulberry. Yes. Oh, I, was, I, I okay. used to follow. I used to kind of mimic their game. So that's what I try to make my game after was like Steph on Mulberry, Baron Davis during those times were yeah the point guards that were big, strong, athletic point guards that oh, yeah. Yeah. I could see myself as they're about my height. They were very athletic. I was very athletic, so I was like, okay, I'm a model as to kind of how they play. So yeah. that's kind of who it was. Like. People people sleep on Baron Davis, man. Look at his highlight. Oh tape, yeah, dog, he was nasty. Yeah, they, so Charlotte, they all that, man. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he was he Crazy. was incredible, and I was I, I had opportunity to see him close up because they I went to Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, and they just were they were the New Orleans Hornets at the time. Mm -hmm. So we used to get to see all their games because you know the local uh, stations have all the yes, games. So I was yes. able to see see it oh, firsthand man. when he was in his prime, where most people don't remember seeing him. Oh yeah, he was nasty then. That was his prime. Amazing. Yes. All right, All right so I'm gonna call you the the yeah, yeah, AP. Oh, not AP. What's it called? Uh, Baron Davis, BD, right there. 
That's your, that's your, that's your, that's your next AKA right there. AKA, AKA. AKA, AKA, little, AKA little BD. So go ahead and ask me any question you want. Okay. You said you had a five-year goal. Yeah. What are you doing to achieve that five-year goal in the next year? Okay. So one of my things in talking about visualization, I, I want to be a public speaker. I want to work on it. Right. I want to get in front of students. I want to, I mean, student, I want to get in front of an audience. I want to talk on a stage. And, okay. I, and I, when you say visualization, I close my eyes sometimes and I try to picture an audience. I still get, ner I get nervous, like this really there like in my stomach. Um, so one of the things I'm doing, and I have a, not like a speech coach, I have one of my fraternity brothers that gives me a little bit of guidance. As I said, he's a little bit more, he's further along than I, I see him doing public speaking and gigs. And the, yeah. thing, the thing that just stuck in my head that he told me to do was get reps, get reps. Yeah. And I was like, what's that mean? And he was like, get reps, get in front of people. So I just started doing whatever it took to talk, like public speaking. So I joined, I joined Toastmasters and I do that mm -hmm. there. Every time there's like an open mic for like, you know, TEDx, you know, TED, TED Talks. Yes. I sign myself up and I, I go to them and I don't sign myself up to attend. I sign myself up to, to do it, to talk. Yeah, I, I did. I did one open mic last year, and then I just—I I don't know. I—I I just try to find any opportunity. I'll say I'll talk to anyone for free. I'll be, you know, sending out like a, I made a list of topics, and I send them out to local communities, like churches and high schools and stuff, and say, you know, I'm free, freelance. Let me talk. And I, yes. and I and I, so that's what I'm working on. Like, I mean, eventually down the line, I want to talk to a big like audience of you know, a thousand yeah. people, but. Right now, I'll, just say, I'll, just, I'll get in front of 10 people if, if they let me talk. That's kind of my... That's great. And that's, so that's kind of... That's how I doubt it What he that. said is get reps. That's a great, yeah, great, great uh, information and advice because you're literally training yourself to make that normal. That's one of those people's biggest fears. Yeah, yeah. It's totally speaking because of their self, their lack of self-image. So that's great. Now you take okay. away that fear. That's huge. Well, I'll, and, I'll give you some... And then the funny part... And the, yeah, and the funny part is I'm not nervous. Uh, like when I talk in front of, I mean, I get nervous in my stomach. I can talk, I can talk to anybody. Like I'm super extroverted. But what I'm learning now is now my reps are not reps to get over my fear. Now my reps are reps to get more refined, to be more That's sharp, good. to be more That's like, good. I don't, I don't have this. I don't, I don't have my reps now. Like, oh my gosh, I need to, I'm so nervous to talk in front of people. That's not my reps now. My reps That's now good. for me is to be like, Okay, did I did I stop saying um and ah? Did I uh did I use better vocabulary? Did I use, did I yes. did I deliver the message? Did I sit in silence better? You know, like you know, it's okay when you're doing a public speaking thing and the room is completely silent, but you gotta yes. get comfortable in that. So like now, I'm taking my my training of myself in public speaking to the next level of not just being you know exposed to it is actually getting better. Like you know, like when you go in the gym, you want to just lift or, to get lifting, but after a while, you're like, okay, I need to actually lift a good technique before I hurt myself. So that's real. That's, that's what good. I, so that's so, so you're at the, the next step. I think in 2020, what I want to do is like just be more refined when I talk. Like slow that's myself good. down, stop saying ums and ahs, you know, try to try to change my words, try to remember stuff. Cause I, you know, uh I, I try not to, you know, remember my speech because I know a lot of, like I've always been so fascinated that people that can just talk straight and I'm like damn did they have a teleprompter no they just were good at it so that's what i'm working yes. on that's what it helps with on. that structure to learn how to structure out a speech mm -hmm. where you can structure out and be able to deviate and bring it back to that structure as well which is very yeah. powerful yeah technique as well yeah well, then what's your question and and use my hand i actually i got your question you want another one huh you, you I want, thought you had more. I was making uh, sure. Oh, you want another one? All right, all right. I got one. I got one. So, <laughs> uh, you were already back in Cali, right? But yeah. you you said one of my favorite places in the United States. Well, how far were you from New Orleans? I was literally about two hours. Okay. If you could, would you live there now? Would you live in New Orleans? Not right now. <laughs> Why not? Well, I'm familiar with the area because my wife is from the school I went to. So we were in that area a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm on assignment where I am right now, and I got things I'm trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I decide my location by what I'm doing. Yeah. And it doesn't help that 
have some of the best weather in our country is in Southern California. So that yeah, kind of helps yeah. as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Cadillac. <laughs> I got to get out there someday. Or not someday yeah. again. Get out there again. All right. Well, um, we're good. This has been a wonderful podcast. Uh, you know, as I said, when I meet people for the first time on a podcast, I'm like we become friends. We're going we're gonna to stay in touch. Um, yes, sir. The platform, the stage is yours. Uh, any shout outs that you want to give and then any plugs. And in, re in regards to plugs, anything that you want the listeners to know, I'll put in the show notes that they, so they can follow up with you. Yeah, so if you want to get more information, you can go to successepitomize.com. That's epitomize, E-P-I-T-O-M-I-Z-E. -E, and you have to add the D at the end success epitomize.com it means literally the perfect example of success we believe that success is predictable if you have the right keys so our job is to help you find those keys to success we also can be found on instagram at success epitomize also on facebook success epitomize agency which will allow you to get more information on our products and different things we have we have a success academy that you can be a part of to enroll in different courses that will literally have the course will teach you personally your own journey, or you can hire a actual mental performance specialist as your own mental performance coach to help you walk you through your process and system. You can also get the books and our website is epitomized and find any books that might be suitable for you. We have visualization books. We also have, meditation books that teach you all the different techniques that we show we also have a book called the five five steps to transform your minds to mastering any industry which helps you teach you all the minds we talked about so you can also purchase that in our bookstore so those are all different things you can reach us at different materials that can help you be successful and we want just to help everyone reach the ultimate level of success in every aspect of their life Nice, nice. I would definitely have to check that out too. And, and we'll have all that in the show notes. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. I definitely want to have you again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 as the podcast grows, maybe we can do a visual, uh, actual video uh, podcast. Yeah. But, but I really appreciate you taking your time. I learned something today. I have some things to get back on the drawing board for myself and visualize for myself to get me to the best self that I want to be. But I think you definitely gave me a good jump start on some of those thoughts that I can, that I can think about. And I really appreciate you. Um, no listeners, problem. I appreciate you having us. Yes. Yes. Listeners, if you want to listen, you know, you like this episode, please follow it with Anthony uh, and, and, and utilize all his resources. Follow Positive Filter, uh, Positive Filter with the PH on all the platforms, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. And if you have any questions, please submit them um, to me in, the, in the, the Google form in the show notes, or you can just leave a voicemail at 571-336-6560. That's 571-336-6560. It's been a pleasure and we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.